My Outdoor TV is your home for every Major League Fishing 2024 event. Yes, sir. Including the General Tire Team Series. I put the team on my back, baby. Watch free on My Outdoor TV with promo code MLF30. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The B&W trailer hitch is stage one, Monroe, West Monroe, presented by Power Pole. We welcome you inside our Major League Fishing studios alongside Marty Stone and JT Kenny. I'm Chad McKee. This week, 80 of the best bass anglers on the planet converged in Louisiana for stage one of this year's Bass Pro Tour. We've been through five grueling days of competition and now, only the championship round remains. Let's take a look at this season's full tournament breakdown. Each Bass Pro Tour stage consists of six days of competition made up of three rounds, qualifying, knockout, and championship. The first four days are the qualifying rounds. All 80 anglers are seeded into two groups of 40, each stacking up as much weight as possible on the score tracker. At the end of their rounds, each angler with the most weight advances directly to the championship round while the remaining top half of each group survive to fight another day. Day five is the knockout round. 38 anglers hit the water, all with their weights back at zero. The eight anglers with the most weight at the end of the day will earn their ticket to the final round. Day six, championship round. The stage's top 10 anglers face off to fight for the points, the money, and the glory of being a Bass Pro Tour stage champion. So we've gone from 80 to 40, and now only 10 remain. Before we get you out there to the waters and see who collects the $100,000 first prize for this event, let's recap all the exciting, record-breaking knockout round action that led us to today. After four punishing days on Lake Darbone, we unleashed 38 Bass Pro Tour anglers on Louisiana's infamous Caney Creek for the stage one knockout round. Their goal, finish inside the top eight and join automatic qualifiers Mark Daniels Jr. and Jared Lintner in today's championship. Though former Red Crest champion Edwin Evers began the scoring in period one, it was Jordan Lee who quickly sent shockwaves across the score tracker. Within minutes of lines in, the Abu Garcia pro and former Bally Bet Angler of the Year landed a monster 8-1 to grab the morning lead. In what would become the Day of Giants, this was just the first of numerous Louisiana lunkers scaled in the round. Moments later, the MLF veteran Randy Howell caught a colossal 10-11, claiming not only the day's $1,000 Berkeley Big Bass bonus, but also the record for the largest ever fish caught on the Bass Pro Tour. Look at that. Our biggest bass ever was 10-8, and this is 10-11. In period two, the tour's reigning Bally Bets Angler of the Year, Jacob Wheeler, took control of the knockout round. With the help of a six-pound chunk and two seven-pounders, Wheeler posted a near 30-pound period to overtake Jordan Lee for the score tracker's top spot. When Wheeler talks about the best day he's ever had on water, that's impressive. It's amazing is what it is. As they had all day long, the big bass of Caney Creek showed up once again in period three. The Hall of Famer, Mark Davis, caught a seven, Jacob Wheeler a five six, and Jordan Lee his second eight pounder of the round. It is amazing how many they caught. I'm sure Marty will have oh the exact numbers for us of eights and sevens and sixes. And all I know is a I, lot. Right. Like, I can't even keep track of all this. We needed that. Midway through this final period, all eyes then went to the highly contested Toro cut line. With numerous anglers in striking distance of eighth place, Alton Jones snagged one last scorable bass as time expired. Two pounds, zero ounces. Boom. Let's go in. Let's go respool and get ready for bussy break. Yes! 
In addition to our automatic qualifiers, Mark Daniels Jr. and Jared Lentner, Jordan Lee and Alton Jones have advanced to the championship round with Jacob Wheeler, Bradley Roy, Brian Thrift, Randy Howell, and Shin Fu Kai, who finished the day only ounces above the Toro cut line. So who will claim Bass Pro Tour glory and $100,000 today? Will it be one of our last two Bally Betts Anglers of the Year, Jacob Wheeler or Jordan Lee, or maybe a first-time winner? Let's count you down and get you all set for lines in on Louisiana's bussy break in the championship round here on the Bass Pro Tour. Five, four, three, two, one. Lines in. Start a championship today. Let's go. First cast. See what's going on in this place. Don't have a clue what today holds, obviously, but I'm excited about it. It's going to be a challenge, I'm sure. Well, it's going to be fun getting 10 pounders out of here. I can just tell you that right now. Fun for you guys, not fun for me. But I'd love to have that problem. The water's starting out 50 degrees on the Lawrence this morning. That's, that's cold water down here in Louisiana. See some fish on that good target right out there. But water temperature 50, you're pretty cold. You was 45. You're getting warmer, but still low temperature. I'm liking this first stop. Something a little different here. May not get a bite, but saw some rock. They usually hold around rock this time of year, especially offshore. We are starting off right here next to the boat ramp. There's a little bit of rock. It's also a neck down. There's a ton of shad right here in this little, this little zone. So I figured there's no better place to start off other than where the buffet's at. Talk about some habitat for some largemouth bass, though. My goodness. I bet these things are happy in here. They're just loving life. Just trying to figure out, you know, what depth and what kind of baits they want. But just trying to get that first bite is crucial, you know. You're, learn, you're gonna learn a lot. I'm really expecting that as the day develops and the sun gets high, I think these fish, even in the deeper trees, are gonna suspend up and be in that top one to two feet of water. And you should be able to work on them with a spinner bait or even with a jig. You're just gonna have to figure out what kind of trees they're in, what kind of depth they're in, and what bait they want. My old black and blue jig might be the deal here today on this lake too. You got cold water and all this wood and stain water. Yeah, I don't know of any fish in the country this time of year that doesn't like a big old black and blue jig. So shallow. There's a lot of brush on this lake that's in like six, seven, eight foot. And this stuff here is just two. But it's close to that channel behind us. So it's like an easy spot for them to move up if they want to. So far, the score tracker's not lighting up. So that tells me that the winding baits aren't working too good. So I'm going to just keep my cricket wet. I don't feel like there's going to be a lot caught, but I feel like what's caught is going to be big. You're not going to have to get a ton of bites, but you're just going to have to get enough of the right ones. Oh, gosh. Stay on there. 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 Got him. Got you. Yes, there we go, baby. First bite. Settle down, baby. Settle down, big mama. Four pounds, one ounce. Four one, baby. Yes, sir. Start her off with a nice fatty Guggen Lunker log. Just pitching it around a little 5 16th ounce weight. Score tracker update. Mark Daniels caught a four pound, one ounce bass. He's the only angler on score tracker. Now they're in here thick, just tricking one, figuring out where to throw. Just a black and blue five inch lunker log, Guggen Bates, nothing fancy, but gets it done. Texas rig, a lot of people wacky rig, weightless, but Texas rig like that. Flipping him around, get you dinged. So you get that first bite, everybody's just kind of in search mode. Where are they at, what are they doing? How deep are they? What type of tree are they in? That's the piece of the puzzle we need to put together. Jared Lentner, he was the winner of Group B, his first time to automatically qualify for a Bass Pro Tour championship round. So he spent some time giving us a lake breakdown. All right, we're here in West Monroe, Louisiana. 
Today is the championship round on Bussy Break. I had the opportunity to go over there and do a ride around. We could not fish. It's gonna be a fantastic day. I can imagine there's gonna be some big, big fish caught today. Based on what I've seen, it's gonna go down with a big rod, big baits. <laughs> it, it's gonna be one of these tournaments that every one of the anglers wanted to compete in. I've seen willow trees, cypress trees, all kinds of different types of buckbrush. There is a little bit of riprap around the, the whole lake. It's just kind of like a square lake. There's a ditch that runs around the whole lake and it's lined with willow trees and it's pretty narrow, but it seems to me you can drive a boat there. I did. I don't know if you're supposed to, but I didn't hit anything. So other than that, there's that one boat lane that runs right down the middle of the lake. After that, you're kind of on your own out in the stump fields. Outside of that, it's just stumps and gnarly all kinds of wood. Um, I can see big jigs, big spinner baits, chatter baits, swim baits even. The weather's looking prime. We got high sun, very little wind, kind of light and variable. But even if it does pick it up in the afternoon, it's such a small lake, it's really not gonna affect it. The days are getting longer, the temperatures are rising, the water temp's gonna rise, and these fish are gonna move up and start biting. Man, to win this tournament, that, that's, the, that's the thing about not pre-practicing. I don't know what lives there. None of us really know what lives there, but you can only assume the stories you've heard, you know, about this special place. I guess it was closed for so many years and they just reopened it. They drained the lake like five, six years ago, restocked it, left all the natural habitat there. And I've heard stories of teeners in there. So, I mean, you just gotta catch what you can catch. The first period is gonna be a really, really good indicator on what you need to do. Like if people start popping off with four to eight pound fish, and you ain't catching them, abandon what you're doing or put on something bigger and go to work because if they live there, we're gonna catch them. Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Power Pole, total boat control. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure, and by Guaranteed Rate. Visit rate.com to learn how you can save money today. Welcome back to Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The B&W Trailer Hitches, Stage 1, Monroe, West Monroe, is presented by PowerPole. It's the first championship round of the 2022 Bass Pro Tour season. And in these early parts of period one, the bite is tough for today's 10 anglers on Bussy Break. While they continue to hunt for Louisiana Giants, let's go over the scoring rules. The anglers began the round with zero weight. A scorable bass must weigh at least two pounds. The pro with the most weight at the end of the day will be crowned stage one champion. All right, Mark, with that fish, you are in the lead, bro. <laughs> Only one on there, huh? Yes, sir. It's first fish of the day. I like it. We're not magicians, folks. This goes to show you, we don't show up and they just jump in the boat. We gotta work for them, too. I mean, it's not like they got anywhere to hide. Four million targets. For every bush sticking out of the water, there's 14 under the water. I can't flip, that's too much to flip. I don't get any bites so far, so I think I need to move different area or Different stuff. I mean, that fish was literally in the middle of that tree. And that's what they like to do when, when the water's cold and high pressure. They get snugged up real tight in that stuff. Make you work for them when you get bit. Putting the puzzle together, trying to get that first bite. It'll give us a clue of what we need to chase. Trying to see if I can find a concentration of fish first before I start going and picking trees apart. And I'm seeing some fish on the active target off these two little points here, and that's kind of what I was looking for. It just might be hard to fish that way with all the timber. See, this stuff out here, I mean, it's just, I'm not saying there's not fish in that, but that's not as appealing as this is to me. It's a hard line, bigger trees, like those little isolated willows in the middle of all that buck brush, high percentage. One of the biggest keys is getting confidence in a bait. If I could get a bite pretty soon on a certain bait and just lock it in my hand, you know, my chances go way up because I'm going to keep it in my hand. I'm going to start putting it around the right stuff. But until I get a clue, we're just going to have to instinctually fish. Kind of like being around grass this time of year. It seems to hold fish. I'm not, there's so much wood that I'm not really trying to focus on that right now. 
and because it's cold, the water's warmed up a degree or so, it's 50 degrees. Once I get that first bite, that's gonna hopefully tell me what I need to be doing. I mean, we went 40 minutes on score tracker, all 10 of us, without a single bite. And so that was my first indication that I probably need to slow down just a little bit. I just kind of picked out some of these more isolated bushes and started flipping this lunker log around and taking my time. You know, that was the first clue. Got her. Get up in here. And just like that. You got a bite. Look at that fish. Four pounds, eight ounces, four eight. Four eight. That is a chunk right there. Finally got a bite. Randy, I have a score tracker update for you. Second angler on the board is Bradley Roy with a four pound, eight ounce bass. Big ones. Catch one, it's gonna be big, I think. Put you in second place, seven ounces behind. Last flip right here. Let me out. Now my confidence just went through the roof. And I, I don't think it's gonna be a get a bite on every tree type thing, but it's a bite. Now let's see if we can get two bites. You gotta get a bite to get in an area and typically like throwing a vibrating jig you can cover enough water you might you might actually get a generator generate a bite or two still no bites yet we're looking at them on the active target right now trying to find some concentration of fish versus 500,000 trees around here for them to get on so i'm trying to find a pinch point if we could find a place that has multiple fish it'd be a lot better than just having to go around and just throw at every tree See, the problem with this is like needle in a haystack fishing. Man, I could flip these to the end of time and never run across one. There's some big, big trees on that little island or whatever it is. Usually, the biggest trees in the bunch is going to hold a bass. I've come out here now to some little bit lower stuff that's somewhat more exposed to the sun, I'm trying to slow roll a spinnerbait through the tops of these things. And I'm really expecting these fish to come up at some point in here. Get up in here. Mark, that's going to be a fish landing Was violation. Was that a slight touch? No, no slight touch. All right. Can't argue with the man. That lunker log again, it's gonna slow down. Three pounds, five ounces. Three, five. All right, there we go. <sighs> nice, healthy, chunky fish. Yes, sir, bussy break. All right, let me put her back. Pre-spawn female, looks like. Jordan, I have a score tracker update. Mark Daniels Jr. caught his second fish of the day. He's in first place with seven pounds, six ounces. Mark's got a little, little something going. That shallow water is going to warm up a lot faster than that deeper water. So those fish, I think, in my opinion, will stand a chance of being a little more active in that situation. So we're going to slow down, man. Utilize these power poles to start picking her apart. I'm here today at the Bean Horn Museum and Gardens, inviting you to discover Monroe, West Monroe, Louisiana. Discover our history at Chenault Aviation and Military Museum, which honors General Claire Chenault and the Flying Tigers. They're so famous, there's a brewery in downtown Monroe you can discover and have a flight of your own. Just across the beautiful Washtenaw River is Antique Alley, shopping district in historic downtown West Monroe. You can stroll and find numerous opportunities for some retail therapy. To discover our outdoor beauty, visit Black Bayou National Wildlife Refuge where you can always see animals in the Spanish small swaying in the trees. There are over 800 different animals at Louisiana Purchase Gardens and Zoo, or you can venture out to the rolling hills to Landry Vineyards and taste their wines. We are in Northeast Louisiana, and as you know, Louisiana is known for its food. You can dine on the water here at Traps, Waterfront Grill, or Warehouse Restaurant, or get a taste of Southern love at one of our over 100 locally flavored restaurants. So come on over and discover Monroe West Monroe, Visit us on the web at monroe-westmonroe.org to plan your trip. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The B&W Trailer Hitches Stage 1 Monroe, West Monroe is presented by Power Pole. 80 began the week and now only 10 pros remain. Today, one of them will etch their name in Bass Pro Tour history and claim the top prize of $100,000. 
Less than one hour remains in period one, and only two anglers have hit the score tracker. Favorite fishing pro Mark Daniels Jr. currently leads, while the Kentucky native Bradley Roy sits in second place. Though the field is off to a slow start, it's clear that the quality bass of Bussy Break Reservoir will determine today's stage one champion. Black and blue, very hard to go wrong with it. Very simplistic, very basic, but efficient and gets it done. Mark got that clue, so he has some confidence in whatever. We need to get a clue. I mean, everybody's fished the obvious stuff, like the cut throughs and all that stuff. Now you're just gonna have to think, put your head down and fish, is what it seemed like to me. The good thing about this toughness for everybody, though, it's you can actually ride around and not fish a little bit more than normal, just trying to find the right stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. I found some grass, I fished it, I didn't get any bites. Fished some shallow trees. I'll go out here and look a little deeper, some of these deeper trees that's in six, seven foot. See what's going on out there. See, I think the shallower water is gonna warm up a little faster. Pay really close attention that we were sitting in five foot on that bite. I wanna to try to get in that four to five foot zone where there's maybe some grass, some pad stems of some sort. I'm really confident that there's fish along this tree line here. Right on the other side of it's five to seven feet, and this side's three feet. Should be where the fish are wanting to pull to. It's gonna warm a little quicker. As that sun gets higher, too, not only does it warm the water, but it's also gonna put those fish a little closer to the cover, so that should do nothing but help. But we'll see. My confidence will go up as the day goes on. Fish on the active target right there, and if they're bass, that's a bunch of them. I don't know if they're bass. I feel like they're gonna eventually get up there shallow today and be a little more active, I would think, but it just may take a little longer with it getting warmer. Shallower the water, you know, it's gonna get colder quicker, but it's also gonna heat up quicker. See, I like this right here, how they can swim out of that ditch over there, that deep water right over there, and swim right up into these bushes, and vice versa, from behind. I bet when you do catch one, I bet these fish are fat and healthy and sassy. That'll look like they've been on steroids. Oh, my god. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> this is fun now. This has got fun in a big hurry. <laughs> Look at that toad. <sighs> Nine pounds, three ounces. <laughs> Look at that big old beast right there. Oh my God. Score tracker update for you. We have a new leader, Brian Thrift. Caught a nine pound, three ounce fish <laughs> for his first fish of the day. <laughs> wow. Thrifty, he caught him a giant. I'm trying to see some of them. I ain't seen nothing where I feel like I can get a nine three. That's good news in that there's big ones. Any swing of a rod. That's pretty good right there. Oh my goodness. I got my sinker tied in a knot. That was pure chaos there for about 25 seconds. I already flipped that tree he caught it out of, too, right as soon as we got started. Come off. Well, they're all good fish, man. Every fish caught's a good one. Thought I hit that fish pretty good, but she took me out in that way. And I mean, when you're dealing with big ones around this kind of stuff, you're just going to lose some. When I throw a day, uh, it's got quality fish. Needle in a haystack fishing, boy, it's tough. But I mean, what else a man to do? I mean, there's no doubt that with this watercolor and this kind of structure, I, they'll bite this jig if I can get it by one. Still don't have a clue what I really need to be doing. I mean, one bite could be luck. Like, I could flip the rest of the day and not get another bite. There's so much stuff to flip out here. Five, four, three, two, one. Lines out into period one. It's going to be a grinder. You can already feel it. The writing is already on the wall, which is not a bad thing, necessarily. But you're going to have to make them bites count. It is tough. But Brian caught nine pounder. We just got to keep grinding, man. We're still looking for a clue.
we, we can't do anything without a clue. For like a round fish, for like we're flipping something we can get bit on, so now it's just a matter of getting them in the boat. I think it'll get better as it warms up, but it might be late, but hopefully we can survive till then. We're gonna keep searching, find that sweet spot. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. Bussy Break Reservoir, site of the championship round of the B&W Trailer Hitches. Stage one, Monroe, West Monroe, presented by Power Pole. Top 10 this week on the Bass Pro Tour, battling it out on Bussy Break. Here's the way it shakes out. Bradley Roy caught a four and a half pounder. Mark Daniels Jr. has run into a couple trying to get his first Bass Pro Tour Championship Day win. And it only takes one for Brian Thrift, especially when it's a 9-3. Four anglers on the score tracker, six others. Well, let's just call the first period practice. The old Allen Iverson. <laughs> it's not overrated, is it? It is not overrated. <laughs> it's necessary. Inside our Major League Fishing Studios, alongside JT Kenny and Marty Stone, I'm Chad McKee. Let's, let's continue with that thread, though. Okay. These guys did not get to throw a line in. It's like a cup event. And those who are so familiar with watching our Major League Fishing Cup events, which is where this all started, this is a lot like what they are. It's a lot of practice in the first period. Then the best in the business really go to work, Marty, once they get things dialed in. Here's what happens in an event like this, and just like every cup that I get to watch with these guys in the water, here's one of the reasons they're the very best in the business. They like to go fast, and they like to cover a lot of water. They want to be able to catch baits at a high rate of retrieve and a high pace on the trolling motor. But as we have seen already today, this water temps in the low 50s, you're dealing with a Florida stream bass, unlimited amount of cover. These fish are buried up, but what we've got to watch is these guys go through their progression. But now, you watch. From going fast, we're going to see them all pick up that flipping and pitching stick and really pick this cover. But one of the biggest keys, and we saw it already happen with Bradley Roy, and he will not be the only one, there is going to be heartbreaks. These fish are too big and there's too much cover. There is going to be some fish that are going to just flat out whip you. Get over it, deal with it, go on to the next one. Warming temperatures, it's going to get up to 70 degrees today. You got bright sunshine shining down on this place. Is that going to help? as the day goes on, JT? So typically in a place that has a little bit of stained water, like what we're looking at here on Busey Break, that stained water will warm up a little bit faster. So when we get that radiant sunlight coming down, so that more stained water, it's little particles that are in the water that make it stained and have that color. Well, that stuff will actually hold that heat a little bit and that dirty water, like what we're dealing with here, will warm up a little bit quicker. And I'm kind of on the bandwagon with Marty today. I think those fish are gonna get closer towards the tops of those bushes. But at the same time, maybe some of those fish that are buried out in that grass may work their way up where these guys can start winding something later in the day. Line's going in with our leader, Brian Thrift. I'm gonna flip for a little more, see if we get lucky and get another bite. That's gonna be the plan for right now. I'm gonna change areas here pretty quick. My game plan is pretty much simple. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna leave this area until I absolutely feel like I have to. I mean, you know, I had the bites to probably be in the lead. Only four guys caught fish so far, so yeah, it's still tough, but uh, this leg had a nine pound already, so I just need a big bite, big couple bite. That's it. I mean, I don't believe it's like, oh, I'm throwing too heavy of a line, or I just don't really feel like I've put it on one yet. Just looking at the conditions we're dealt with right now, a slick glass calm, no wind. I don't see many reaction baits getting bit, which is what my initial plan was with the whole offshore grass and all that. It's gonna be who could drop their cricket in front of enough bass's head to pull this thing off. I switched to a half ounce weight and just basically trying to really cover a lot of water. I mean, you can't flip all this stuff. You gotta get a bite first to really slow you down, so. For me, if I can sort of go fast and pitch around to the high percentage stuff, I might be able to find a zone. I mean, that's really what you have to do. I mean, we went out and get a bite in here, but this just makes sense to me that they would be in a place like this right here. Just right off the deeper water, but up in the three foot instead of the seven foot. You can use any depth they want right here. I mean, anything I know about fishing says a place like this looks like it would be, this would be good right here. And there's just so much to flip. I mean, it's just, I think that's part of why we're struggling to get bit. I don't think they're real active. They're not going to chase it. You could probably got to put it on their nose. I bet somebody's lost a big one this morning, too. Couldn't get them out of the brush or whatever. It's kind of the nature of this deal.
God, he just come off. Ugh. I had my hand on him and missed him. Dang. Number two. Golly, these fish are built so pretty. Three and a half. Three pound, 11 ounces, 311. I like your right better. It's another bite. Man, they're so cool. Bradley Roy has caught his second bass, three pounds, 11 ounces. Moves him into second with eight pounds, three ounces. Well, there's some fat fish in here. This is like torture, because you like, you know, they're not biting great, but every flip, you know, could be a giant. So you hold your breath on every flip. That tells me I need to keep flipping. <laughs> Hope I get them in the boat. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like they're really, really biting all that great. But I've had two bites flipping, and they've both been giants. Let's go, baby. Three pound, nine ounces, three nine. Three nine. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Three 13? Yes, sir. That'll work. Brian Thrift's got his second fish, weighed three pounds, 13 ounces. Now it's 13 pounds, zero ounces. Well, two fish. Bradley Roy's caught his third fish. Now it's 11 pounds and 12 ounces. <sighs> Nothing bite. Four bites in this one little pond. That's pretty good. Two of them was big. Hey, we need a big one. It's coming, too. We need a big one. It's gonna happen. Seven pounds, six ounces. Seven, six. Got another big one. Score tracker update. Brian Thrift caught his third fish. A seven pounds, six ounce fish. Jeez. He's up to 20 pounds, six ounces. So you're telling me we need to catch a few bats. Three fish for 20 pounds. That's impressive. Man, Thrift caught a seven after catching a nine. Wow. There is some big ones in here. Mark, that puts you 13 pounds, zero ounces behind. Yes, sir. Thrifty even got on some juice. Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour is brought to you by Bass Cat, Feel the Rush, Grundens, We Are Fishing, Toyota, Let's Go Places, Rapala, hand-tuned and tank-tested since 1936. And by Fuel Me. Fuel ordering simplified. Welcome back to Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The B&W Trailer Hitches Stage 1 Monroe, West Monroe, is presented by PowerPole. Having already landed a colossal 9-3 in period one, the North Carolina native Brian Thrift just followed that up with the bussy break beast of seven pounds and six ounces. Got another big one. Though he's only weighed in three bass, the Abu Garcia Pro currently sits in first place on the score tracker with more than 20 pounds. Thrift and his near seven pound average has now shown the field that the road to the stage one victory runs through the giants lurking beneath the surface. When the water's cold like this, I like to flip a tube, something that doesn't have a whole lot of action to it. Water color here is pretty dark, so this is just a black and blue tube, just a normal everyday tube. Now what I know about thrift, 
He ain't flipping no bushes. Or in the grass. He ain't flipping. That's facts. All you gotta do is find one little area, one little point of brush or whatever that's got several moved up on it. You know, that's basically what Thrift's got right over there just outside of where we were. You know, he's just milking that area back and forth. And this is very similar to it. We just need a big one. I mean, I'm, I don't get me wrong, I'm happy with it. I just, we need some big ones. Especially if he's gonna keep catching nines and sevens. Put me a bigger, bigger gold, a three quarter ounce with a bigger gold willow and a little orange Colorado. We got vibration and weight and color. I'm trying to hit the biggest, tightest, you know, trees, slow down on those. I was to try the little bit deeper stuff and shallow stuff, both of it. But still, I don't understand where the fish are. Well, I wouldn't say I'm getting clued in, but I haven't got bit all day, and I've gotten two bites doing this. These are some isolated bushes, and they're in that perfect depth zone. They're in that three-foot depth zone. If you can get that first bite to give you a clue, I mean, that's just the biggest thing. You fire around enough, you're going to get a bite eventually. I mean, the thing with this jig, I know that one swing and I'm back in it. I mean, big ones bite it. And obviously, there's big ones in here. I still got confidence, three or four cash, I can be right back in the lead the way this place is. That's a promising thing. Nobody's run away with it, especially if you catch one of them eight, nine, ten pounders they've got in here like Brian Thrift caught already. I seen that bush here. Yep, that's the way to start right there, boys. Five pounds, 15 ounces. Fish number one, six pounder. Doing what I like to do, too. Jordan Lee caught his first fish, moved into fourth place with a five pound, 15 ounce fish. Five, 15. Yes, sir. I got some good ones in here, boy. That bush, I mean, it just shook. I was thinking, oof. If she's got it, I'm fixing to give her the gas. She had it. We don't need old Joe Lee catching them. We can just stay on one, as far as I'm concerned. You can come later right there. Gotcha. Got to wrangle that one. There's another big one. Now we're on to something. That one weighs six. Close. Six pounds, 12 ounces. Mm. <laughs> oh, boys. Almost seven, flipping. God, it's a tank. God, that's awesome. That's what we're after right there. Jared, I got another score tracker update. Jordan Lee has now caught his second fish. He's up to 12 pounds, 11 ounces. It's two pretty quick. Moving you down to third place. Oh my gosh, dude, it was like a... You're currently seven pounds, 11 ounces out of the lead. I've been a little slow this morning. I finally got something maybe figured out. That's two of them. That was like a dang eight plus. Three pounds, nine ounces. Work. God, fish short, fat, stocky. I got another bite. Just doesn't make any sense to me, man. Sun's out, water temps rising. I mean, they should be in these bushes. You gotta find something different. I thought the lake being so small would be pretty easy to break down. I didn't realize it was a full flooded forest of trees. Slow and steady, that's what I'm trying to do. We got to lead right now. All we got to do is maintain. Maintain, that's all we got to do. Some big ones starting to pop off. Seven, sixes. Boys are starting to put it together. 
Welcome back to Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The B&W Trailer Hitches Stage 1 Monroe, West Monroe, is presented by PowerPole. Located 30 miles north of Monroe, West Monroe in the state of Louisiana, Bussy Brake underwent a full renovation in 2017. The 2,200-acre reservoir is now considered one of the top fisheries in the Louisiana park system, as you can see here in this favorite fishing overview of the day. So Jordan Lee, zero no more. In about five minutes, Jordan Lee has caught 12 pounds, 11 ounces. 13 total scorable bass have been caught by our 10 championship round anglers. Brian Thrift leads everybody with four for 23.15. His lead is 11 pounds and four ounces over Jordan Lee, 12 pounds, three ounces over Bradley Roy. So we just relocated an area that I feel like gives me the best chance to generate a few bites. This area just has more flats, so there's grass. Just really good looking spawning flat. All right, now we gotta make a decision. If I can catch another one right here, I might stay here all day. Just go back and forth. Pretty dug out ditch right here. It's got that hydrilla growing right down the walls of it. I don't see no reason why they wouldn't be here. I mean, maybe we're just on these flats too much, I guess. I don't know. God! Just trying to stay focused. I don't know where these fish live. The two bites I've had come flipping bushes, and so it's hard for me to do anything else. It's just a matter of dropping your cricket in the right bush. Unbelievable. Hard to get a bite, man. You can't freaking miss them. Well, it doesn't take much to move up really high right now. Three bites put you right there. And I haven't got a big bite. I feel like I'm due for one of those giants. So I feel like I'm around fish. It's just slow going, trying to get one to bite, you know, and you're trying to cover it all and make sure you don't miss anything. And I'm hoping that I can start going back through some of these areas and getting bit again. Starting to find stuff that looks a little bit promising right here. Just found some hydrilla and some a flat here with some grass on it and some coots. Tying on a swim jig. Try something a little bit different. Just see if I can cover.